This video is for education and entertainment purposes only. Please consult with your healthcare provider before making any changes to your health plan. Hey, beautiful soul. It's Jacqueline from the Las Labia Chronicles in partnership with Lichen Sclerosis Support Network. If you have lichen sclerosis and are looking to empower yourself with information, find acceptance and reclaim your life, then please subscribe to our channel and please keep on watching. And if you have a friend or family member with lichen sclerosis and you want to learn more about the mental and physical health aspects of living with lichen sclerosis so that you can better support them in their journey, then please subscribe to our channel as well and please share it with them. All right, friends. So today we are doing part two of our exercising with lichen sclerosis YouTube videos. So if you missed the last video, you might want to pause this one and go watch the first video, part one. Um, I will leave a card up here for you to check out. I will also leave that linked in the description box below for you to check out. So in that last video, I reviewed some tips and tricks for exercising with lichen sclerosis. And then we moved into demonstrating some a seated exercise routine that you can do seated in your chair at home, at the gym, wherever you are. Super accessible, great kind of starting point. That said, not everybody with lichen sclerosis can sit for prolonged periods of time. I've spoken to many people who have a pain component to their lichen sclerosis where sitting is really, really painful and really, really difficult. So for those people, I wanted to make another video where I demonstrate standing and lying down options where we're not sitting, there's no pressure on the vulva, you know, we've got that pressure completely removed out of the equation so that you still have options and things that you can do to get that exercise in because exercise is a great thing for our health, it's good for mental health, for physical health, and you know, again, most doctors will recommend that you still exercise even if you have lichen sclerosis. So I wanted to create a video that kind of helped give you some ideas to work on your own exercise routine. Just like I mentioned in the last video, please, 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 I am not a personal trainer, okay? I do not have any such credentials. I don't have a degree in kinesthesiology or anything like that. I am just a person that loves being active. I love doing physical activity. That is it. So don't take this as perfect form advice or anything like this. This is really just to kind of inspire you and give you something to work with if you're kind of new to this and just don't know what to do. So again, feel free to pick and choose. You can also take some of the exercises from the seated video and then some of the ones from the standing video. You make it your own. This is really about you and what feels safe and good for you in your body. So. Again, if you wanna check out the seated version, check out that link, check out the link in the description box below. And as always, if you find the information in this video helpful, then please subscribe to our channel. Please give us a like, please shoot us a comment. I love interacting with everyone in the comments. If you have any video requests, please leave those. Um, I always take those down and put those in my content calendar. I'm already building out content ideas for 2024. So please, if you have any recommendations or requests, please let me know in the comment section below. Okay, so before we dive into the demonstrations of the standing exercises that you can do, I did just wanna share some tips and some advice for working out and exercising with lichen sclerosis. Now, if you already watched part one, this is gonna be the same advice, so feel free to just use the chapters in YouTube to skip ahead to where I just go to into the exercises. In the event that you haven't watched the first one or you saw the first one, you read that it was seated and you were like, nope, that's not for me and didn't even bother, I'm gonna share the same advice again, so just to make sure that everybody gets that advice. But again, if you've already heard it, just skip ahead. No worries, I will not be offended. Okay, so my first tip is to be gentle and to be slow. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean, if you've stopped exercising or haven't exercised in a while, you don't kind of want to go from zero to a thousand, right? We don't want to go from, I was doing no exercises to I'm at a CrossFit box seven days a week, and then I do a hike in the afternoon, and then I go kayaking in the evening, right? It's just gonna be too much all at once. So for me, 
and everybody's different so take or leave as always take what resonates with you if it doesn't resonate leave it at the door i'm not offended but for me it was really important to do a slow gradual return to exercise in a way that felt safe for my body and in a way where i was respecting where i was at so i'm going to flesh that out with an example because i know that can be pretty vague so for example i love walking i take big big walks like walking is a meditation for me it's where i reconnect with myself it's where i work on my mental health it's just such a a wonderfully safe space and happy place for me but i stopped walking when i had lichen sclerosis because i was very symptomatic when i was diagnosed and if you're new here and you don't know my diagnosis story and you want to check it out i will leave a card up here and i will also leave that linked in the description box below but suffice it to say that i was quite symptomatic in the beginning and just riddled with anxiety like panic attacks daily crying just all of the things so i knew that for my type of personality that i needed to do a slow reintegration of exercise back into my life because i actually stopped exercising for a while there because i thought that i couldn't exercise with lichen sclerosis but then when i discussed that with my doctor he was like oh no like please exercise it's very very important for your physical and mental health um, and he really really stressed you know the importance that we don't cut out exercise because it's a great way to manage stress and to keep our body overall healthy which we definitely want to be doing when we have lichen sclerosis so i left there feeling excited because i knew that i got to exercise again but also really afraid because i had stopped and i didn't know how my body was going to respond so what i did was i did a very slow gentle gradual increase of bringing exercise back into my life so with walking i started by doing just a walk around the block one walk each day that's all I did for a couple of weeks then when I started to grow a little bit more confident and I started feeling a little bit better I did two laps around the block so not very long but that's what I did you know for a few weeks until again I started feeling comfortable I started feeling confident and then I said okay let's try a 30 minute walk and I just kind of gradually slowly increased the duration and amount of walking that I was doing I did something similar to the gym so i love lifting weights and when i first started back i actually didn't do any lower body i actually just did upper body training for the longest time for a few months and then when i started to feel better and again a little bit more confident i said okay let's work our legs but i was very mindful of how i worked my legs so i wasn't doing exercises where your legs are kind of split open or really wide i wasn't doing like walking lunges i tried to avoid exercises for my legs that had a lot of friction so i really just prioritized exercises for my legs where my legs were relatively close together and where there wasn't a lot of friction and so we're going to do some of those to in today's video but that's how i gradually brought it back until i went where i'm at now and i can do any exercise with no problem but that was a journey to get there okay so slow gentle respect your body building on the first tip tip number two is to modify your exercise routine so in the first tip i said to respect your body and be slow so let's say you're doing a lunge and your body is like absolutely not like hard no like red alert like we're pulling the alarms this is not happening girl cool back off respect your body is telling you no listen to that respect that honor that and back off that said backing off doesn't mean i'm gonna throw in the towel and stop exercising it doesn't even have to mean i'm gonna stop exercising and i'm gonna leave the gym backing off can sometimes mean modifying your exercise plan so if my body is screaming no to me while i'm doing a lunge that just might tell me that okay i'm not gonna do lower body today I'm still going to stay at the gym still going to get a workout in but maybe i'm going to focus more on upper body today or i might modify the position that i'm doing the lunge in like if i notice that there's a certain angle that doesn't feel right but if i just shift my hip and that feels a little bit better then maybe i slightly modify you know my hip position or my feet position or i bring my legs closer together kind of play around with it to find what works so again it's a bit of an experiment and it's going to be different for all of us but a big thing that we have to do when we respect our bodies is listen and modify and sometimes modification isn't a thing sometimes you actually need to stop and go home and that's okay too but always 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 listen to and honor your body tip number three lube up 
Yes, lots of moisturizer, okay? Emollients are your best friend in general, but definitely if you're gonna be exercising. Now, if you're new here and you've never heard of an emollient, um, or a barrier cream or something akin to that. Um, I do have a video where I go in depth on that. So if you want to check that out, I will leave a card up here. I will also leave that linked in the description box below so that you can check that out. But essentially an emollient is just a vulvar moisturizer. So this can create um, a bit of a protective barrier, which actually reduces friction. So that's why it's really important because a lot of us get really irritated at the gym and a lot of times that's due to just friction, the vulvas kind of rubbing up against each other. So one way that we can kind of reduce that friction or offset some of that friction is by using a vulvar emollient. My choice is coconut oil. Everybody has a different preference. There's no wrong or right emollient. You use what works for your body. I love coconut oil because it works for my body, because it's the cheapest option and it's the most accessible option. Those are things that are really important to me. I need cheap options and I need them to be accessible. That might not be your priority, and that's okay. But so I use coconut oil and I use a copious amount. Like I just dig it out of the jar, slather it on before I get to the gym, and then I do my workout. Now, sometimes if you start feeling a little bit more irritation mid-workout, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just you know finish my set and then I'll go to the bathroom, and then I usually have a little jar of coconut oil in all of my bags. So I go to the, my locker, I pull out my thing, I go to the bathroom, I apply a bit more coconut oil, and then I go back to my workout. At the end, I actually sometimes will apply a little bit more um, if I'm feeling it, sometimes I don't. You just gotta learn to listen to those bodily cues, which takes time and practice, by the way. It's not something you just like intuitively get. I mean, you might, and yay for you, but if not, that's okay. So after, I may put some more on. If not, I'll just come home, shower, and then reapply. So definitely moisturize to help minimize friction and irritation at the gym. Tip number four, if you experience some pain and irritation, general discomfort after working out, you can try using perianal or perineal, sorry, um, ice packs. So my brand of choice is a company named Private Packs. They make non-toxic gel private pads that kind of stick in your underwear and they cover that whole vulvar area and the anal area as well. These packs can be put in the freezer to make it into an ice pack, or you can put it in the microwave for 10 seconds or dip it into or submerse it into hot water. That hot water will slowly heat that gel and so that when you take it out, it kind of becomes like a little heat pad, but for your vulva. So um, after the gym, if you're feeling kind of irritated or sore or you know just some pain, it can be helpful to apply some cold therapy to it. So you take your little private pack out of the freezer and you put it into the protective sleeve because no matter what you always want to have a protective you know layer when you're icing that does not just for your vulva like even if I had a shoulder injury I would never put ice directly onto it I would wrap it in a cloth or a thin sheet something to pr create a protective layer so then post-workout if you're you know to kind of bring down some inflammation and kind of help with that pain and discomfort you can apply the cold therapy slip it in your underwear, you can lie in bed, you can sit down and have your post-workout meal, you can walk around the apartment, but you've got some cold therapy. And then another thing that sometimes I find to be helpful is that, you know, um, our pelvis is full of muscles too, right? And so if you have a big workout and your muscles are really sore, a lot of times we go take a nice hot bath because heat really relaxes the muscles. So if you feel that maybe some of your pain is coming from like pelvic floor tension and tightness, um, it can sometimes be helpful to apply heat to that area because that heat helps those muscles kind of <sighs> relax a little bit. And that can be a really nice thing for pain reduction. So sometimes I used both, like sometimes I would get home from the gym and do cold therapy first. And then in the evening I would do the heat. Sometimes I would just feel like, oh no, I think my muscles just need some heat. So I would do the heat. You can play around with it. Um, there are a number of brands. So again, my preferred brand is Private Packs. Um, I will leave that linked in the description box below if you wanna get your own and you can use um, my discount code, uh, which is the Lost Labia Chronicles. You can use that at checkout for 15% off your order. Otherwise, you can get different brands or variations. Probably your best bet would be to shop on something like Amazon to find them. Um, 
probably be the easiest way and they'll have like a bajillion brands that you can kind of pick and choose from so it doesn't have to be that brand but i definitely recommend that you do get some kind of volvar um, pack that you can use for hot and cold therapy my last piece of advice here is going to be to take rest days which is a day where you're not really exercising it's a day that you give your body to truly rest recover heal and repair so how many rest days you take is really going to depend on you i will say that in the beginning when i was kind of bringing exercise back into my life i took more rest days than not um i really tried to give my body a lot of time to rest um now i take about two to three rest days per week really just depends sometimes on my schedule and that's another thing too like with how many rest days you need really just depends on your body and how you're feeling but i would recommend at least two rest days a week especially in the beginning but again like there's more to it than just that if you're a busy person and you can only exercise twice a week then that means you're taking five rest days and that's okay as long as you are still prioritizing rest and allowing your body time to heal and recover and balance itself out then that is good so definitely do prioritize your rest days all right so we are going to jump in to some standing and lying down exercises that you can do with lichen sclerosis again always listen to your body feel free to modify any of these in a way that you know really suits your body and where it's at this is just to give you some kind of inspiration um, feel free to follow the whole thing if you want or just do some again you can pick and choose and do some seated do some standing whatever works for you but in this series we're not sitting the reason for this is that some people cannot do prolonged you know seated positions it causes too much pain they really need the pressure off of their vulva and of their pelvis so if we exercise standing up or lying on the floor we've taken away that direct pressure so again if you have pain with sitting this might be a better option for you to kind of play around with especially in the beginning as like the previous seated video um, you can do approximately three sets of eight to twelve reps for each exercise that said again modify it to what you need if you're a complete beginner and you are exhausted after one set of eight reps cool leave it gradually work to increase those reps or those sets or the weight the resistance something like that so again me saying three sets of eight to twelve is just to give you kind of a general guideline but honestly at the end of the day you got to do what works for you and your body so always prioritize that for this standing slash on the floor sequence, we're going to start with some upper body. So we are going to do standing bicep curls. So again, same principles when you were seated, but now we're standing up. So this is good if you have a lot of pain in the vulvar area and you can't really sit for sustained periods of time. Standing or being on the floor takes a lot of the pressure off of that vulvar area. So again, keep your legs, you know, hip distance or a little bit closer, whatever feels good for you got two weights or soup cans in your arms and then you can do single so just like this and curl up like this and curl up you can do them single or you can do both at the same time like this just to get a different angle you go from the side so curl up all the way to the top squeeze that bicep and then bring it back down again squeeze 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 that bicep all the way up to the top and then bring it back down okay so this next one involves a couple pieces of equipment both of these i got off amazon super cheap i got it years ago so honestly i don't even know what the link would be but if you just look for bands and kind of like door stopper things you should be able to find those on amazon i'll try and find a couple that like are similar to what i have and link those in the description box but so this first thing is an attachment if you can see and this you kind of put in the door so that you can attach bands and stuff so i take this I'm going to open the door. I'm going to place this outside and then just kind of close the door and pull it in. So now I have this nice stable place for me to hook this band through. So then you're just going to take your band and you're going to put it through that loop area. And there you go. Now I have a nice little pulley system that you can work with. All right, so the first exercise we're going to do with this kind of setup here 
is we're going to work our back muscles a little bit. So we're going to do a single arm upper row. So you're going to have your band like this, okay? And then you're going to take one arm. I like to do one at a time, but you can do both. And then you're just going to row it back like that. So bring it back up and then row down like that. Really squeeze that lat muscle when you come down and then release when you come up. You can do both at the same time. Row both like that, really squeezing those shoulder blades together and then release. All right, for this next one, we're gonna work our chest. So we're gonna grab both of these and we're gonna kind of angle ourselves to the front and then we're gonna push this down and really squeeze the chest muscle. So bring it up like this and then you're gonna squeeze in with that chest. Bring it back, squeeze down with that chest muscle to really target those triceps and your chest muscles. So this last one that we're gonna do is a lat pull down variation. We're gonna do another lat workout for the back. You'll see I changed the band because the other band was too uh, heavy for me to do. So that's another thing you can play with the resistance of your bands um, and you might need to do that depending on what you're working. So for this, you're gonna stand in front of the door. You're gonna hold your arms out in front of you like this and then you're just gonna bring them all the way down as close as you can to your hips. So bring it up like this and then engage those lats, really squeeze and feel them on the way down, bring them close to your hips and then bring it back up. Okay. The next one that we're gonna do is we're gonna work these calf muscles, that lower leg, and we're gonna do standing calf raises. So same principle as when we were seated, but now we're standing again to take the pressure off that, that vulvar area if you have vulvar pain. So you can do this, you can either hold something for support like a chair or a wall, or you can do it hands-free, whatever feels good for you and your body. So I'm gonna hold on with this arm so that you can see. And then same principle, you're gonna stand up tall and then you're going to squeeze those calf muscles to lift those heels off the floor. Pretend like you're wearing the biggest stilettos you've ever worn. Squeeze those calves at the top and then you're gonna come down. And then you're just gonna repeat again, coming up onto those heels, squeeze at the top and then drop down. All right, so for this next sequence, we're gonna do some stuff on the floor. So again, not seated, there's no pressure on the vulva but we're gonna work on hitting that posterior chain of the legs. So here we're gonna really focus on glutes and hamstrings. So the first thing we're gonna do is a glute bridge hold. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna lie down like this. Okay, we're gonna make a little triangle with our legs here, close to the butt, but not too close to the butt. Your legs can be you know, hip distance apart, or if it feels better for you, you can bring them closer together. Then from this position, you're gonna squeeze the glutes to really lift up, push into the heels and squeeze the glutes. Now while you're up here, you really wanna focus on squeezing the glutes and squeezing those hamstrings. These are the two muscle groups that we're trying to target here. And you're just gonna hold like this for about 30 seconds or as long as you can. Whenever you're done, you're hold, come back down, reset, okay? And then you'll do another version, well not another version, you'll do another rep all the way up, squeezing at the top for as long as you can. And you're just sustaining that hold, really activating the posterior chain to engage those muscles. All right, so for the next one, we're gonna do something very similar, but this might be a little bit more advanced depending on where your lichen sclerosis is at. So instead of just holding that glute bridge, we're gonna go up and down. So you can do this with or without weight. I'll show you with weight after. But so again, you're gonna get into that same position on the ground, arms by your side. <clears throat> when you're ready, you're gonna squeeze those glutes, dig into the heels and squeeze those glutes and push up. Now when you're at the top, unlike the hold, you're gonna come right back down. So lower the butt to hover right above your mat and then you're gonna push back up. So again, if this doesn't feel good for you because you're worried about tearing and that's a little bit too much movement, you can just do those isometric holds and those will be just as efficient to really target those muscles. Now, you can also add a weight if you want a little bit more of a challenge. So grab your weight, 
place it slightly around those hip bones, but not on the hip bones, okay, because that'll hurt. Um, so place it there, same movement. We're gonna dig into the heels, use those glutes to really push in all the way up, and then lower. And you're just gonna do, you know, anywhere from eight to 12 reps of this with your weight, and then when you're done, remove the weight. The next one we're gonna do is targeting more of the hamstring. So we're gonna do an isometric hamstring Hold. I'm going to show you two variations. The first one is definitely a lot easier. The second one might look easy. It's one of the most challenging exercises I do. So first one, it's going to look similar to the glute bridge, but we're going to place our feet more far out. So when we're doing the glute bridge version, our feet were more up here. And now to get more hamstring activation, you're going to walk your feet out a little bit further. Then same concept, you're gonna dig into those heels and you're gonna push, you're gonna squeeze those glutes to bring you up. And now you're just gonna hold. Now because the feet are further out, we're really targeting those hamstrings instead of hamstring and glute, we're getting full hamstring activation. Now here's the harder version. Bring yourself down, take your legs together so your feet are gonna be stuck together like that. And you're gonna walk those out almost to the edge of your mat, like this. Then from here, you are going to dig those heels into the ground, like really dig, dig, dig all of your effort. And you're, I'm gonna move my hands. Okay, you're gonna keep your hands here, lying on the floor next to you. I'm gonna move the hands so that you can see what I'm doing because the movement is very minimal. So already just digging my feet into the floor, you, that can be level one, okay? That already here, my, my hamstrings are definitely activated right now. Then if you want extra challenge, you're gonna try and raise your butt off the floor. You might not even be able to see this on film because it's so minimal. I don't know if you can hear my voice is shaking, my hamstrings are shaking. This exercise is really, really, really challenging. And it's a great one to get those hamstrings without doing much movement so that we're kind of, you know, being LS friendly and LS safe and doing this one. So you hold for as long as you can. It might only be five to 10 seconds at the start, build up to 30 and then drop and reset. All right, the next exercise that we're gonna do is called an RDL, which is a Romanian deadlift. So grab a weight. You also can do this without a weight. So I'm gonna do the first one without a weight just to show you the movement and then I'll do one with a weight to show. So you're gonna stand like this, right? Take your arms, put them on the front of your thighs, then you're gonna try and bend forward, push the butt back, and really just follow the motion of your arms. Lean back as much as you possibly can. This might be as far as you go, okay? And that's okay. You can lean back further, you can keep going down, and then come back up. So again, hands in front like this, and you're gonna lean back like that, put your hands down, and come back up. If you can go further, that's okay. If you can only go to here, that's okay too, start here. Squeeze the butt at the top, squeeze those glutes, and again, like that, and squeeze those glutes. I'll show you with the weight. I'm just gonna use this weight here. So again, weight here, just hanging down here, chilling. Then again, we are going to sit the butt back, like this, and then really use those glutes and hamstrings to pull you back up, squeeze at the top. Again, you don't have to go all the way down. You can stop wherever feels right for you. So again, that might be just to here and then up, or you might find yourself going further back and pulling up. So that's the way. Okay, so again, we're gonna do a squat. Now for this one, this can be more of a scary one to do because especially if you're prone to tearing like I am, any kind of movement where we're kind of going like this can be scary because we're nervous about tearing. So if you're in a phase where you're actively tearing, feel free to just skip this one. If you haven't torn in a while and you're feeling like you want to try something, go for it. Just be really, really slow and really, really mindful with this one. So I'll show you from the front and then I'll show you from the side. So standing, feet, leg distance or hip distance apart, okay? We're not gonna do a wide kind of sumo squat, nothing like that, because again, when our legs are really far apart, we're more likely to tear. So we're trying to do something a lot more gentle and mindful for lichen sclerosis. So feet hip distance apart, 
and arms at your side. And you're just going to pretend like you have a seat in back of you and you're going to stick your butt up, bring those arms forward, and then hold and squeeze the glutes at the top. So from the side, that's going to look something like this. You're going to lean back as if you're trying to sit in a chair, and then you're going to push up, really squeezing those glutes at the top. Now, how far you go down really depends on you and your body. You might find that at the start, and this is how I started bringing squats back into my routine, was I was doing like mini squats. So I would go like to here and then just come back up. So you don't have to start by making the movement really big. You can just start by creating some confidence in your body by doing these mini squats and then in time, you can go a little bit deeper and even deeper still. Regardless, just listen to your body on this one. All right, beautiful soul. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I hope you enjoy this little standing slash lying down routine for lichen sclerosis. I hope that you found the tips in these two videos helpful. Um, and I am wishing you the best of luck on your LS journey, on your exercise and LS journey. Um, let me know in the comments which exercises you're looking forward to trying out, which exercises are your favorite, um, how you prefer to exercise, anything like that. Let me know in the comment section below. And that is it for this video. I will see you in the next one.